Here we have Dr. Tom, who's from Growmore, which is an awesome chemical provider to Monster Gardens. He is also an entomologist and has an extensive history in not just the chemical aspect of mitigating pests, but also from the entomology standpoint. So Tom, from a perspective, I don't want pests. I do not want pests in my garden. I might have to mitigate them, but I don't have them now and I don't want them. So integrated pest management. Well, what we do in terms of integrated pest management or I like to say production management because we combine all the facts that make that plant healthy starting with irrigation, fertility and so forth. So the key first line of defense is keep the suckers out of there. <laughs> Exclusion is the first line of defense, okay? And in most pest management, whether it's in outdoor field agriculture and food crops or indoor garden growing and medicine and other things, it's an issue of exclusion. So the first thing with pest management is not getting them into the garden. If you have an intake, you have air moving in your garden, you should have filters on that air source that are ensuring that you're not blowing pests in your garden. If you're moving into your garden, you should ensure that you're changing your clothes or if you have people coming into your garden that they themselves are changing their clothes. And some of our large licensed facilities even have people take showers before they go in the garden as well as change their clothes. So that's ensuring you're not bringing things in the garden. What other things I'm maybe not thinking of that could also be you know, an initial step to not getting the pest in the garden? Yeah, and by just perfectly right on with those guidelines, those are the initial steps you wanna take in a balanced uh, IPM program. Exclusion is key, as you've mentioned. Now, when we talk about pests, the plant pathogens are critical. You don't want to be moving plant material around. If you think back to when people used to grow in uh, greenhouses, tobacco for example, mm -hmm. tobacco mosaic virus is carried in the tobacco. If a man was out smoking and he came in and then handled the planting stock in a greenhouse, he could transmit that virus mechanically. Oh wow! That's just an old example that we really don't think that. about anymore. But the issue is no movement of plant material, mm -hmm large operations, whether you're doing tissue culture of a poinsettia plant or any kind of very high valuable nursery stock, mm -hmm. you want to exclude both the plant pathogen and any of this insect stuff. The mites are coming in, they don't fly, they're coming in they march. on something. Yeah. Okay, they're coming in on a leaf, they're coming in on a guy's sleeve, mm -hmm. they're coming in on your finger. One gravid female is going to produce three or four hundred eggs. So they very rapidly go from one female to a lot of challenge and, and hassle. I see. And to me, when I first heard that there was a lot of challenge in a lot, in a lot of pro production agriculture with root aphids, mm -hmm. in real nature and big field crops, we never see root aphids. I well, you come indoors and you have an environment, it's you've got a beautiful, perfect soil, mm -hmm. you got this perfect world for root aphids. So exclusion right on. If you can get people to clean themselves, we for years coming into any of our production greenhouses, we have people step in a tray of bleach. That, yeah, that's a clean great one. Clean your feet. Mm -hmm. Clean your feet. Get mm -hmm. the pathogens off of there. You don't want Phytophthora or Rhizoctonia pythium. All those water molds. Those are all coming in on spores on you. You know, I've, I've I myself have recently been in gardens that have easily had a million dollars worth of production put into the machine itself of producing the plant production, um, and I was not asked to do anything to myself before I walked into those gardens. Um, let's say there aren't the healthiest gardens that I've seen out there and I did see some pest outbreaks but it's amazing to me that a gardener would focus so much on recreating the natural environment indoors artificially at a very high expense and then leave out this very important first step which is exclusion and making sure that you're not bringing the problems into the environment that you're trying to recreate. Um, so I, I love the, your take of initial steps of ensuring that it doesn't become part of the system altogether that you're trying to protect. Um, so that would be initial steps of, of not getting the pest into your garden. So the next step would be people moving into plants and not themselves moving plants into the facility. Typically there'd be a quarantine process, I'm guessing, that, that people would go through before they would initially take a plant into a, a greenhouse or a production garden. What would you, what have you heard of being a typical quarantine scenario, you know, new plants, plant stock coming into a garden? 
I think that the key thing there is I'm not really specifically sure on what cultivars you're talking about and when you would, how, how exactly long, but the principles are all the same. Okay. You want to isolate anything coming into a production situation until you can ascertain whether or not it's clean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, almost all of these really tough things like mites are coming in on something. Mm -hmm. And there again, it's a tiny, tiny amount that starts out. Mm -hmm. You put it in the perfect environment, it becomes big very rapidly. So as you've have alluded to isolation of that initial quarantine facility it needs to be top-notch so nothing can move out of there mm -hmm. then it just takes really good key focus on eyes and ears on what's there what might be occurring in there and at that point on that isolated quarantine material you want to be sure if you have to do something and you have something in there it's certainly cleaned up before you move it next door into any kind of production situation. So in a quarantine scenario your focus is going to be more on maybe a few times a day checking that plant um, versus your typical garden you might check on it once a day so it's almost like the quarantine is going to be a greater focus than the garden overall if your goal is to start bringing new stock into the garden um, that's that's going to be the beginning of a problem and you want to make sure to nip it in the bud and to have it um, as safe as possible before you move it into the next phase yeah absolutely no pun intended nip it in the bud <laughs> and so one of the cool thing one of the great examples if you look at the indoor production of um, on the vine tomatoes. Those are an indeterminate tomato crop that grows three stories tall in a very expensive multi-million dollar greenhouse. That particular plant, the hydroponics are worked out, the nutrition's worked out. The biggest fear in that production system is getting a white fly into that building that would vector a plant virus that can wipe out a million dollars production of that white fly getting in. Wow. There again, your facility, you mentioned early on, needs those filters. Mm -hmm. You don't want any flying insect coming in that might have any issue or, um, and bringing any virus into any crops. Mm -hmm. The other issue that we, we typically have is all of your production media, your soilless media stuff, your, your plant growing medias and stuff, we're depending on our good manufacturers, and of course you man, you you distribute the best and the highest quality oh, products. You, you want to work with the best materials so that you're sure that you're coming in with sterile and clean stuff. And then when you buy products that are actually inoculating soil with beneficial organisms, whether that be mycorrhizae, beneficial bacteria, and so forth, you want to work with the best and reputable companies so that you know you've got stuff in there. I'm not saying that people are putting pathogens in on your crop, but if you're working with organic fertilizer, Highest quality compost. control possible. You yeah. want really, you want pharmaceutical quality control on this stuff because you don't want to introduce pathogens into a clean environment. And a lot of our customers now are trying to recreate a pharmaceutical environment for their plant production. So it's very important to stay consistent sure. there. Thank you so much for this information. It's really helped, I'm sure, our, our, our listeners to understand what the best tools are and what tools aren't the best to be using. So thank you, Tom. You're really welcome.